when Shotcut first starts up, it just looks like a media player. We designed the application so that additional functionality sort of opens up, unfolds, uh, but you can just use it as a basic media player. So for that, you would basically just click File Open or Open File and choose a video to play. Now you can um, you know, navigate through the video, you can pause and play, you can scrub like this by clicking and dragging on the uh, scrub bar here. Another way to scrub is to hold down shift and then just wherever you move the mouse over the monitor. Some applications call that skimming. While it's paused here, I can just use the cursor left and right keys to step frame by frame. It also supports the J, K, and L keyboard shortcuts, where L starts playback, and if you press it again, it goes faster, and K will pause it, and then J will cause it to play in the reverse direction, you press it again, it goes faster in reverse, if you press it again, it goes faster in reverse, K to pause. Now you can click properties and you can get some information about this video file. For instance, uh, if there's more than one audio track, you can click the audio tab and then choose the particular audio track you want to use from this list. Let me make a note about the uh, appearance here. I'm running Shotcut on a KDE Linux desktop. Uh, Shotcut adopts the look and feel of the desktop on which you're running. So on Windows, it should look like on w Windows. On uh, Mac, it should look like OS X. And on Linux, it should look like um, KDE or GNOME, depending upon what you use. Uh, so you're appearance will look a little different than mine probably. Now another thing we can I will tell you about is um, just about the user interface in general. <coughs> uh, this the, It uses a lot of panels so you see when I clicked properties it opened up the properties panel. I can click this to close the properties panel. Clicking properties repeatedly does not close it. You have to cl close it this way. And there's um, a recent panel here that shows the last 100 of the most recent clips that you've opened. And from this point if I click properties then it will bring properties to the front and recent to the front. You see that they're tabbed right now. But I, c I can also just click and hold on the recent title bar and drag it down below the properties panel and arrange the panels this way. Now the next thing we might want to do is encode this. Uh, transfer, uh, convert it to another format. So I can just choose well first of all let me show you that again. I'll turn off these panels. I'll click encode and at the top is a list of presets. <clears throat> it's probably best to choose one that's closest to what you need and then modify it below. And then after you've modified it, you can click add and add a custom preset. Here I have one for doing uh, very fast H.264 encoding. And if we look through the tabs here. I'm just going to increase my bit rate to say uh, 3 megabit. And here's the audio settings. And here's how I've set it to go very fast. Preset. Click encode file. Now it op opened up the jobs panel automatically and it's now running the render or encoding job and you can see how the progress is going. You can also click 
and view the MLT XML that was created for this job. When it's done, you can click Show in Finder, or I mean Show in Folder. On, on Mac, it'll be in Finder. Here on KDE, I'm using, uh, it shows up in Dolphin. And here's the file. And I can also choose to just open it, in which case it will open it up in the shortcut player. I was going to say, you need to start drinking more coffee. Close these windows. Here is a volume control. You can adjust the volume up and down. You can click this just to hide that and get it out of your way. Which one is your wife? Well, she's not here. Now, a couple of other things we might want to do. Let's see here. Oh, let me show you this. I'll switch over to a folder view here. And I'll, another way you can open up a video file is just to drag it and drop it from your file manager into the program. There we go. So this is also just a handy way to preview a bunch of files. Now let's say we wanted to um, do some additional things to this video before encoding it. For instance, we might want to remove this introduction to the video. Just get straight to it. And for that you do what's called setting an endpoint. This marker on the left hand side that with a triangle shows you the current starting point or end point. You can drag that over. You can say so you can drag and select these guys. Or you can just go to a particular point and press the I key on your keyboard to make that the end point. One handy thing to do is while you're playing is you can just repeatedly press O or I to nudge those things along. And so you'd be like, that's enough. Okay. And now I can show you what these keys do on the player control. So this will go to the, the left uh, point, which will be either like if we're down here, it'll go to the out point, it'll go left again, it'll go to the in point, go left again, it'll go to the very beginning of the cl clip. Now if I encode this, I am in only going to encode this section that's been selected. see that's going very fast. Another thing you might want to do, I'll go ahead and uh, trim it down, is apply some filters to adjust the image quality. So you can op click filters to open up the f uh, filters panel. And we'll click the plus sign here to choose a filter. Uh, some of these are going to go off your screen. My my pop-up menu is going off the screen capture here. Uh, but let's choose, say, for instance, color grading. And here you have a color wheel. This is a hue and saturation wheel and a value vertical slider. So we could adjust this to be a little bit more, say, on the red side. Now a lot of these filters do have presets. Um, you could choose to save this, give it a name. You could make one that's say bluish. There's reddish. Here's bluish. You can also toggle the uh, filter on and off like this. And now we can encode that result.
we can go ahead and continue to do work while that runs in the background. So for instance, we can start to work on, say, a playlist. For that, you just click on Playlist. Opens up the Playlist panel. Here are some quick tips. And the basic workflow is you open something up in the player, you choose the footage that you want, and then you click the plus sign and it will add it to the playlist. If there's multiple things I want from a particular clip, you can just, uh, I'm going to go uh, page down, page up and page down to uh, also navigate by like one second at a time. So we'll, s we'll mark this jellyfish and dolphins. At this point, I can then go ahead and open up another clip. Let's say uh, this shot of Big Sur that I have. And that looks pretty good. We'll just take that in whole and click plus. Or I could have, uh, let's say, chosen. Um, this clip here. Go ahead and mark something in and out. And let's say I wanted to insert it into the second position. You can single click on that uh, second position, right click and choose insert cut. Alternat alternatively, instead of right clicking, there is this menu down here that will give you the same actions plus some other, other, other actions, global actions. So there, now we've inserted, you can see, this guy here. At this point we have a playlist and if we choose to encode, let's go back to view the uh, previous encoding job, yes it's done. and we can encode to this. And it will make the uh, entire playlist just one output video file. As you can see it's going a bit slower because we have more footage to encode. Now while that's continuing to run in the background, I can continue to make some additional edits. For instance, um, you can adjust particular uh, shots. Let's say this one I think was untrimmed. Basically if you um, uh, double click, it'll go to this position in the uh, playlist here. Um, the viewer switches between say uh, clip mode and a playlist mode. Uh, double clicking to takes you to the second item in the playlist. But at this point it is one continuous project if you will. Now let's say we wanted to just edit this guy. Um, we can choose right click and choose open as clip. And then you would make your adjustments. Right click on it and then choose update. And now if I open up this clip you can see it's kept my new in and out points. Now let's say there's some other footage from this particular clip that I wanted to use. I can go ahead and right click and choose open, mark a new section, and then add that to the playlist. 
that will keep the original playlist entry intact. You can see it's the original selection and at the end of the playlist is our new cut. Let's go back and check on that encoding job. So I click the encode button at the top and then click on the jobs tab and yes it's done. So I'll go ahead and, and open that up in the viewer. You'll see that the playlist is still preserved. That is not done. And that's the output of our previous iteration of the playlist. At this point, you can save your playlist as a project by choosing File, Save, Save As, or clicking the Save button. And it will save as an MLT XML file. So now if we <coughs> close this playlist, and close the playlist panel we're back to the starting point and if we choose open open our project and you see it automatically opened up the playlist panel populated our playlist with thumbnails and starts playing it. and at this point if we click on the uh, skip buttons we go to the starting point of each item in the playlist I should point out also that there is a history panel. Let me move this over to the right hand side. And as we, let's say, remove an item from a playlist, you can see it's represented in the history panel. And you can undo that action and also redo.